Hi, welcome to the next part of the cryptography activity pack. So if you've watched the last video on the rail fence cipher, you would have covered a little bit on transposition ciphers. If you haven't, don't worry, not a problem. But if you have, we're just going to do a quick recap for those that haven't. So basically what a transposition cipher is, is it's where instead of um, trying to change the letters to be other letters or maybe symbols, all we want to do is we just want to jumble up the letters in our message. So we would then reorder the letters in some way, so using some kind of rule, and it creates a really hard anagram that basically is really difficult to crack. So the only way it becomes easy then for us to figure out what the message is, is if you know how we jumbled them up. So these are transposition ciphers. So this video is going to cover another type of transposition cipher, which is called a columnar transposition cipher. So the way it works is we would write out our message row by row in a grid. So we have our grid, we write out our message on each row, row by row. And then step two is to read the message down the columns. So you'd read the message off column by column. And this would then become our ciphertext, which we then send to our receiver. The receiver can then write the message back out column by column and read the message off then row by row. So there's an example here, which the message is, this is a secret message. You can see the key is five. So we've got five columns. We write it across the rows, read it off the columns to get our ciphertext. So what we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you step three, which is how to actually write them back out and how to crack the messages. So when we're trying to crack the message, this is something we call decryption. So the decryption process works um, by these five steps. So I'm gonna go through the five steps and then do an example with you. So step one is we need to actually work out how many rows are used in the ciphertext. So we need to take the length of our ciphertext and divide it by the size of the key. And this gives us how many rows we need for our grid. So our rows is um, this number, so the length of the ciphertext divided by the key, and then our columns would be the key. So that's how many rows and how many columns we have. We can then draw our grid um, and start writing out the letters of the ciphertext in our grid. So we can start with the first column and start writing the first letter in the first row of the first column. Then we can put the next letter in um, filling out that column. Once we get to the end of that column, we then put the next letter of the ciphertext in the first letter of the second column and continue writing our ciphertext in the second column. And then we do this for the third, fourth, and so on, and keep doing till we have filled our entire grid. Once we've done that, we can then read off the secret message by reading the letters row by row. So this is pretty hard to understand step by step. Um, so I'm gonna go through an example with you now, so hopefully you'll be able to understand it a lot better. So the first step I said was actually to work out how many rows we need. So if I was sent a message, and I received it and this was our ciphertext, I would need to count how many letters I have here. So if I count it, I've got 20 letters here. So the length of my ciphertext is 20. And then I am sent the, the, the key is five. So my key size is five. So I'm going to do 20 divided by five. And that's going to give me four. So I know I have four rows. So if I'm then to draw the grid, I know I've got five columns and four rows. So this is my grid nicely here, ready for me to start filling in. Um, you may notice I've added in obviously another row at the top, just the numbers, just to make it easier so I know what I'm doing. So I then take my ciphertext and I'm gonna start writing it out in the first column. So I'm gonna take the first four letters, which are T, S, R, S, and I'm going to write them into my first column. So T is going to go in the first space, then S is going to go in the second, then R is going to go into the third, and S into the fourth. Now I've reached the end of my first column, I then need to start in my second column. So I'm going to take the next four letters, and I'm going to fill them into my second column. So I'm going to have H, A, E, and S, which is going to become H, A, E, and S as so. Then I can keep doing this then till I filled my grid with my ciphertext. So I can take the next four and pop in column three, the next four, pop them in column four, and then the final four into column five. So I've now written my whole ciphertext out into my grid. 
So the next part I need to do is then read off the message um, to work out what my secret message is. So I'm going to do that row by row. So I'm going to take the first row, which is T-H-I-S-I, -I, and write that out. Then I'm going to take the second row, which is S-A-S-E-C, -S -E and write that out. Then I'm going to take the third row and add it on, and then the final fourth row and add it on. So you should be able to see this will be a message that hopefully if you split it up and put some spaces in will make sense. So this secret message said, this is a secret message. Perfect, we've decrypted our secret messages. So this is one way of doing the column transposition ciphers using a key that is a number. So if you go down to the worksheet below, you then can have a go at doing some ciphers like this. There is a second part to it, which is using a key that is a word instead of a number. So if you'd like to pause the video now and have a go at the first few and then come back to the video and play from this point, and then we will continue with how to do the second part. So with the second part, I said that we are going to do a key that is a word. So this is going through the steps of the seven steps we need for our decryption process. So the first step, which we didn't have last time, is actually trying to figure out our key. So if I was sent an example of a key which was six letters, the first thing I need to do is remove all repeating letters from our key. So the way it works is just like in this example, obviously each of my columns are numbered. I need to do that for my key. But if I've got repeating letters, I don't know which N comes first or which A comes first or which H comes first. So this is why we get rid of the repeating letters. So if I had the key HANA, which is six letters, I would go through it and have H, A, N is fine. Then I get to my second N and that's a repeating letter. So I'm going to get rid of that. Then I get to A, which is another repeating letter. So I'm going to get rid of this A. And then I get to H, which, which is a repeating letter. So I get rid of this one. So I always remove the second instance or the following instances of the letter. And I keep the first time it appears. So my key, Hannah, then becomes a three letter key, H-A-N. Then the second step is the same pretty much as the first step in the last one, which is working out how many rows we have but this time I divide the length of the ciphertext by the length of the key. So this is gonna be our new key that we've just worked out, not the length of the original key. So in this example, I'd have the length of my ciphertext divided by the length of this key, Han, which is three. Then my third step is then figuring out the order of my columns. So if you can see this example that we did before, they go in order that they appear. So the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth but this time I need to do it in alphabetical order of my new key. So if I take the word Han for my key, then I'm gonna put them in alphabetical order. So the first one is A, so this would be column one. Then I would have H comes next in alphabetically, therefore this is gonna be column two. And then N comes next alphabetically, so it's gonna be column three. So when I write out my grid, I would have two, one, three. So then I'm going to start writing out the letters of my ciphertext into my columns. So I always start with column one. So this time it's actually going to be the middle column. And I'm going to write out for how many rows I have. Then I'm going to write the next part of the ciphertext into column two, which is in this case where H is. And then I'm going to keep doing this then for the third one. And then if I had a longer key, I would do fourth, fifth and so on until I've written out my whole ciphertext and filled the grid. Once I've done that, the last step is exactly the same where I read off the secret message um, row by row. So I take the letters for each row and work down my grid to then get my secret message. So again, this is really hard to understand with the steps. So I'm gonna go through an example to hopefully make it a bit easier for you. So the first step we said was actually repeating, getting rid of the repeating letters. So if I was to receive this ciphertext here, and I was told the key was school, I would need to remove all repeating letters in my key. So if I have the six letter key school, I would go through it and say, okay, S is fine, C is fine, H is fine, O is fine. Then I get a repeating letter O, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And then I have L, which is absolutely fine. So my six letter key school becomes this five letter key, S-C-H-O-L. Then I need to work out how many rows. So I've got my new key. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the length of the ciphertext. So if I count this, it's going to be 20. So I've got 20 letters and I'm going to divide it by the length of the key, which is now five. So I'm going to do 20 divided by five, which will give me four. So now I know I've got five for my key and four for my rows. And remember, our key is how many columns we have. So I can draw my grid, which is five columns by four rows. So I've got my grid here. And again, I've put an extra row at the top with my key in it. The next step we said was actually then to number our columns based on our key. So I've added in another row underneath my keyword. Um, so I've still got my normal four by five grid underneath here. And I've got my extra column where I'm going to put the numbers in. So if I go through this in alphabetical order, if I look, the first letter that comes alphabetically is C. So I'm going to label this column number one. Then I look at the remaining four letters of my key and I say, which one comes next? OK, well, H comes next. So that's going to become column two. Then I do it again. L is next. So this is column three. Then finally, I've got column four, which is O and column five, which is S. So now the order of my columns are five, one, two, four and three. So the last part then is actually writing out the ciphertext. So I figured out the order of my columns. I now need to write out the ciphertext. So we always start with column one, but column one is obviously this one with the C. So I'm going to write the first part of my ciphertext into this column one. So if I take the first four letters, I've got H a e s so this is going to go into column c so i'm going to put h a e and s so i've filled my first column my next step is to then write out into column two so i'm going to have i s t a are the next four letters of my ciphertext and i'm going to pop these into the second column which is h so i'd have i s t a then the third one, I'd have I, C, E, E. So this is going to go into L. Then I'd have the next four goes into column four, which is O. And the final four go into column five, which is S. So I've now written out my entire ciphertext into my grid in the column order of my key. So the final step we need to do is then read it off row by row. So this is then going to be my plain text. So I'll take the first row which is T-H-I-S-I, -S -I, and write this out. Then I'm going to do the second row, S-A-S-E-C, -S and add this on. Then I'm going to add on the third row, and then finally the fourth row. So now I've written out my final plain text. Hopefully I'll be able to read the secret message, which is this is a secret message. So have a go now at finishing the worksheet below. Hopefully you can do both types with a number key and a word key. Um, there are some explanations on the worksheet as well. So if you're a little bit unsure, you can either watch the video again or you can read the steps on the worksheet. And once you think you've cracked all the secret messages, have a go at the quiz above, enter all your answers to get those all important points to get you on that leaderboard. Good luck.